Hello. Um, I wanted to do a reading. Um, my pineal gland is vibrating really intensely and has been for <clears throat> a couple of days now. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's jump in. I'll go be quick with this. As always, anyone sending any negative energy, return to sender. Anyone sending in positive love and light, manifest that more for them and send it back. Um, let's do this, let's dive in. I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is keeping their vibrations high during these very dark, crazy times. That's the first card out. Um, yeah, okay, we've got a few out, let's get these out, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's going to be a good reading, <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's do this level and then we'll, then we'll, um, then we'll step down, um, let's go, you got the wheel card, the wheel of fortune, was it the wheel of fortune? The, the, the wheel, the wheel of fortune. Um, the so The thing to understand, okay, what I'm getting from this is that this is time for you to let go. You cannot control the world, okay? Literally, these people at the base of this picture have got absolutely zero control over what's happening here. And we've got this, this like eagles sort of, like a vulture. I read something about vultures in Egypt. Vultures in ancient Egypt, I'm go I'm, I'm probably I don't want to get this too wrong. They don't represent a negative thing. They oh my gosh, where was it? Where did I read about it? I need to try and find out, but effectively the uh, vultures were not um uh, were not regarded as evil horrible creatures like they have like they are today, like everything, black is white, up is down. Pretty much everything in your in the, in this reality is been has been inverted. Okay. Um, the point being is that the vulture at the top has is in control of the turning of the wheel. I I imagine this to be the kind of like the the, the world is turned by the zodiac. Okay, like, and I don't. I, I don't necessarily mean that sort of like, like physically, like, although I guess there isn't, there is an element for me with astrology where I believe that the planets, all the solar system and the planets are a consistent energy that just, you know, each one affects the other type thing. You know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a lot going on there with, you know, in, with the gravitational pulls and all those kind of things. But the point being is that it's out of your control. Okay. Just like how we can't like, no matter what level of of spiritual magic or hierarchy you're operating in, um, like even to the level where the gods can't control one another, if that makes sense. Okay, they can like they can push and pull power from one another, um, but ultimately they can't control like one singular entity can't control this whole planet. That's a really important thing, I guess I'm now kind of getting the message coming down, is that, you know, let's just, and I'm not just saying this This is the devil because this isn't, but like this deity or whatever this one represents at the base, and I might actually look this up in this card thing, but um, the, dev the devil in this, I'm, I'm just going to say that this is the devil, okay, like underworld, overworld, uh, over, like above, below. Um, 
this this devil is holding people down okay it's preventing them from from controlling and the reality is is that they need to stop fighting it okay they need to let go and just let the let 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 the all being the one in charge steer the ship as it were okay it's not our ship to steer that's what i'm getting from that and that's all about bringing in balance the temperance card okay i've talked about this in the past about these wings not being equal not being in balance one arm one arm is her right arm is lower her left arm is raised okay left being light right being dark for me on a personal level that's how i see left and right right is not right yeah you get me everything's inverted um you've got the steps of isis here that little hieroglyph there and what was it where's my book where's my book um so before we go, I, I'm as I keep promising, as I promised in my last reading, okay, I'm serious about what I'm studying and what I'm trying to learn here, okay? Deadly serious. Um, and th this book that, I'm, that I just referenced is amazing, um, and I'll explain why. So, so, yeah, so that symbol, this little water symbol here, okay, in fact, both, both of these, this water symbol here that looks like a ripple of water, okay, um... In hieroglyphs, that is the that that um the phonetic reference to that is no, okay, so it's no n o. So let me just go to that and just pull this out of this book. I'll explain how I get uh, one day. Uh, I haven't got time today because it's so complicated. Um, but I will explain how how um how I know that this book is amazing. But yeah, no. So um no is float or swim which is the uh, the old Welsh language is nofio, which is the intended root word from no, okay? Which basically means the English translation is preserves, keeps, fixed, refuge, okay? And like, for me, temperance and balance, yeah, isn't about being outweighed by one decision or the other. It's about having perfect balance and harmony between light and dark, left and right. Yeah, you're out of balance. Okay, and that's because I feel like whoever, whoever this, whoever's watching this reading, whoever this, whoever this is for, like could be me as well. I resonate ever so slightly with this. We're fighting, we're fighting the wrong, we're fighting too much, and it's causing our balance to come out. Okay, and I do that all the time. I'm always bickering and fighting against the evils of the world. And you've got the Hierophant card here. Okay. I want to say that's Osiris there. I'm pretty sure it is. Let me check that. Is that Osiris? Osiris, Osiris is normally represented by the Hierophant card, but let me just get my... But let me just read it, man. I keep referring to the books now. The Hierophant card for me is a is very much like the magical... It's like the religious magical aspect, okay, of like... Like, not a counterpart to the Magician card or to the High Priestess, but the Hierophant, um, so for me, has the balance of just one of those core elements, okay? They don't, they don't necessarily have all of the, the tricks at their disposal, okay, in order, to, in order to, to gain the wisdom of a High Priestess, okay? Which, like, and, like, and it's not to, like, kind of try and... Let me just check these things. Not to try and sort of, like get too much into the kind of um into the hierarchy of the arcana but you know the magician card is number one the high priestess is number two okay the magician and the high priestess are not the same thing okay they mean different things and then the then we've got here you know we've got our the, the hierophant which is the fifth okay um ruler of infinite manifestations being in the unity of substance in the divine world in the intellectual world, it's religion. Okay, so as above, so below. So all of the major, all of the major deities and or or, or characters in 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 tarot each have a representation above and below heaven and hell. Okay, or well, as above, so below. One is in the physical world. One's in the spiritual world. People aren't going to like this, but the seven realms of hell, Earth is within that. And by ascending 
through spirituality is how you bring heaven to earth, bring it live in heaven on earth. But by its general nature, earth is not heaven, it is hell. People and people people lose their mind trying to get their head around this. Um it like it's not it's of all of all the heavenly of all the, the realms, okay, below the firmament, Earth is an amazing one. It really isn't that bad. But it really is how it depends on how much you battle and fight it. You can either live heaven on earth or you can live in hell on earth. It is down to your choice. It's down to your battles and what you do. It's down to your own balance. Okay? The Hierophant is solely focused with, with a religious aspect and a religious mindset in the physical world. Let me just check I've got that right. No, sorry. Yeah, like it's okay. Like it's saying, so in this book I'm reading, it says, in the intellectual world, it is religion. The relationship of the absolute being with the relative being from the infinite to the finite. In the physical world, it is aspiration communicated by the vibrations of heavenly fluids. It is the proof of man in front of liberty of action in an unbreakable circle of universal law. So if you're, if you're at your full potential in the Hierophant, as a Hierophant, you're placing religion in the spirit, okay, not in the physical. And I feel that in the world now, we have so much focus on religion being in the physical, not the spiritual. And like that, that kind of can be like summarized quite easily with, you know, how, you know, you don't like going into a temple or a church is a physical thing. That does, there's, there's absolutely zero spirituality there in my, in my humble opinion. The only spiritual the the only true religious spiritual connection is in the is in the metaphysical world not the physical world now that that's not to say you can't do things in the physical i think you can do offerings and prayer and all these things that are incredibly important but they are only half of the puzzle okay and i often feel as well that like a lot of that physical a lot of the physical kind of representations associated with the hierophant are battles and they create constant imbalance because no one is no one sees eye to eye. People have different religions, different beliefs, different prayers, different thoughts, different opinions, right? But it doesn't matter. The only person that matters is the only thing that matters is your is your connection to God, and God will tell you if you're right or wrong. The Hermit card. This is where the studying comes in. And this is like for me, like the, the Hermit card is one of the most important cards. It's number nine, it's a magic number. But the hermit, the hermit card for me represents commitment to study, like not just reading one book, like not just looking at one, like placing all of your beliefs into one book is insane. If you put all your beliefs into the Holy Bible, like good, good for you, good luck. Personally speaking, I want to read all of them. I want to read everything. I want to see as much as possible because like... Like, and a really good example of this, and this is for anyone who's into astrology, go and look at how many different versions of astrology there are in terms of zodiacs. You have like so many different zodiacs where different um, different um, planets are placed in different houses, depending on the, 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 the time when that zodiac was recognised. So there's been so many different variations of the zodiac, okay? My, my belief, okay... This is just my belief, and I'll draw some cards out to see what's what. My belief is that nearly every zodiac that you're looking at, and that most people, the astrologers online and YouTube and all these kind of things, nearly all of them have got it wrong. Because the true, the, the, one of the oldest zodiacs is the Dendera zodiac, which was found in a temple of an Egyptian goddess. And I'm going to be, I want to say it's Hathor. I think it's Hathor's temple. I, I, I might correct that. I think I, I'm, I'm getting told it is. So in Hathor's temple is the Dendera Zodiac, which is the oldest Zodiac we know. And Napoleon, I can't remember if I talked about this before, but Napoleon took, went on an expedition and took a load of military and, uh, people, but also loads of scientists, the best like scientists and alchemists and all of like these, these weird sort of Egyptologists and stuff. And they went there on an expedition to basically steal a load of treasures and trinkets. And one of the things that there was a guy called Denon, um, who was an artist, and he 
went into Hathor's temple and saw on a, on the ceiling the Dendera Zodiac. And he was in awe of it and he drew it. Like uh, Anyway, the point being is that he, he took this drawing and eventually, like the, the, they, they, I believe they took the Dendera Zodiac and it is now in the Louvre. Here's the thing. My question is, I don't think anyone knows if that is the real Dendera Zodiac and it is not a fake or a copy that or there isn't one that, or, or it's been fettered or manipulated or whatever. But the, the truth is that Den, even the Dendera Zodiac could be not accurate because the there are there are parts of the Egyptian civilization that went way before that goes back even further than that. But the, so the point being is that Dendera Zodiac was drawn and it's the oldest version and it does differ. There are there are people that if you really look into it, there are many experts who argue about where true north is, where the the where the where east and west are residing and all this kind of stuff. And the point being is that it only takes one sign, one like, you know, like uh let's just say like it only takes like like Pisces to be in the wrong house. And and the Pisces will be in different houses on different zodiacs. Like, how do you know? Like, how can you do astrology? How can you accurately do this stuff if you don't have the absolute the the source? Now, this is why the Hermit card is so important. Some people, I believe, there are people out there that do have the truth and that they have been using that to their advantage for a long time. Of course, I'm going to bring it to that kind of stuff and I'm going to go there. But this is what I believe. I, I, that's why I believe the Vatican has the largest private collection. Pr let me repeat that. The Vatican has the largest private collection of Egyptian artifacts and books and scriptures and proprietors and stuff that's not available to the public. That's wrong. Here's the point. This level of studying, if you consistently dig deeper and deeper and deeper and absolutely step into your hermit mode, it's going to bring you an abundance. Look at this abundance. You've got the seven of cups. You've got the nine of cups. You've got your two of pentacles. And we have a tower below the hermit. Okay. I'm going to come back to this in a second, the ten of wands. This is the journey, okay? It's, it's stepping off the arguing and the fighting. It's bringing more balance to yourself. Allowing yourself to really connect with the divine. Not just in the physical, but in the spiritual. And have that, that is that balance, as above, so below. Studying, going to full level hermit mode. This is what you need to do. And if you look here, like, it's not completely accurate here, but like, look, the hermit here has like a flame and like a cup. Okay, and there is a cup there, and there are there's obviously the yank, which oh my god, we're not going into that now. It's not today's not a day for that. And then it's gonna shower you with some with some cups. Cups is always like cups is cups is love for me. And like for me, like this the like this highest vibration is so key. The, what is the point of having loads of pentacles if you don't have if you're not vibrating high? Think about that, yeah? If you don't have love, but you have loads of wealth, where are you? High or low vibration? I'm going to suggest you're low vibration. Doesn't matter how fucking, doesn't matter how much, pen, how many pentacles you've got, doesn't matter how rich you are, your vibrations are going to be low. I don't give a shit what anyone says, that's a fact. Even when you get more, 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 more cups, okay? Like, like, sorry, even if you get more pentacles, doesn't matter how many pentacles you get, if you don't have... If you don't have all like as if you don't have it balanced out with a lot of cups, yeah, it's not gonna mean anything. And like for this, like this is telling me, yeah, look, like this person here has got look, these two are begging like this person for cups, yeah. Like this person has, an, has, has got an abundance of cups, yeah. And abundance of cups is more important. It doesn't, you know, they don't necessarily have much much money, okay? They've only got two pentacles here, okay? So it's very like you know, yeah, like with them being like naked and nude, it's almost like a birth, like a rebirth, is what I'm getting from that. Like, the, the, some 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 new money is coming in. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is what I'm this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm hearing. 
New money, the life, the Anki, you know, symbolizing life, new life. Two, two Ankis, two pentacles, two rebirths. That's what we're seeing here. But it's going to create a tower. Okay, you can't have birth without pain. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry, it doesn't. We all want to live in a utopian society where, you know, we have this pain-free rebirth. And in the future, maybe one day we will with enough, like, you know... Oh yeah, I, like I'm just afraid. No, 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 no. Don't say it. But like, I, I truly believe that there's 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 medical ways to do childbirth that we haven't explored. I think are a lot probably going to be a lot more safe and a lot more supporting and nurturing for both the mother and the child. I firmly believe that. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, that's for a whole nother time. That's just come into my head. Okay. Um, the point being is that, like, change always brings pain to a degree in some form or another and like like no do you know what i'm i'm sorry like i'm gonna let me just let me just be careful about what i'm gonna say change that can bring pain okay but change also brings like you can't what is it it was that old saying you can't you can't make an omelet without cracking an egg right sometimes we do have to tear things down okay a tower happening is not necessarily a bad thing and the reason why i say this yeah listen this tower with all these hieroglyphs on okay not for one minute suggesting we want to break stuff, okay? The truth is, if the Egyptians civilization went on for the thousands and thousands of years and possibly tens of thousands of years, if ten being the number, <laughs> that I believe way more than the three that's acknowledged. The point being is that all that architecture and those hieroglyphs and those stories like the Dendera Zodiac, that the Dendera Zodiac is actually quite modern by comparisons in terms of it being a very modern T uh, temple i believe around the time of i want to say augustus but anyway it was very much a time where the, the egyptian civilization was all but uh, not all not entirely but all but very you know on its decline let's say the romans the roman empire was growing in, and so you know so you had this real pull between these old this old school magic and old kind of beliefs of gods and stuff with a new set of values and beliefs which you know we know we know the history of the romans quite well and the greeks and stuff so like you, we got, we have to appreciate and understand that in that those latter stages of Egypt, probably a lot of the stuff that we do see and read is is it would have been distorted and probably wasn't accurate. And we have to unfortunately, there's only so far back we can go. Yeah, it's, there's so much information that like ancient Egypt is just there's so much information to we haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg, which is you know why I like. The hieroglyphs are are really the the, the code to under to unlocking so much of this. Um, I'm going off on a tangent, but the the point being is, look, the, the, below the hermit is going to be that you're going to have to break some towers. Okay, you're going to have to break some boundaries. You're going to have to upset a lot of people. Like these, you've got these two people are trying to keep this up, <laughs> and it's going to go. It's going. Okay, it's going. Look what's going on in society right now. Okay, look what's happening. It is. It, honestly, if this was a movie, if we were living in a Hollywood movie, which we technically are, you would be laughing at how bad it's written, how bad the acting is, how unconvincing everything is, right? Come on, I'm telling the truth here. It's so badly done. And that's because the, the illusion, this illusion of stability, this giant tower that is, I'm going to say, is America. That could be the Empire State Building, is, you know, being symbolic there. It's all going to come crashing down. The ones, like, the ten of ones, like, for me, like, symbolises an imbalance, obviously, right? But look, how much easier is it for this person? We can easily, this person can easily upright this. Very easily. There's no real stress. And this symbol, let me get my book. This symbol is, uh, this is an amulet. Or that means, let me get my book. I won't take so long to find this. I'm gonna wrap, I don't want this to go on too long. This reading, where are we? Yeah, so yeah, oh my god, yeah, look, so look, right. Okay, 16 and 17, yeah, or 18, they're all very similar, okay, 16, 17 and 18, the tat, 
held a very important place in the religious service of the Egyptians and formed the centre of the annual ceremony of setting up of the Tat, service held to commemorate the death and resurrection of Osiris. The death of the old, resurrection of the new. And like... This symbol represents the building up of a backbone and reconstruction of the body of Osiris in the service of the Egyptians associated themselves with Osiris, through whose suffering and death they hoped to rise glorified and immortal. I mean, like, Osiris was Jesus. There's Christians who are going to freak out over that. All, all religious people, it doesn't matter if you're Christian or not, I don't really care. Cards don't lie. Old world is coming to an end. And like... Like, also as well, like, how many, like, you know, like, we got this, we got this classic pyramid at the top, we got the evil eye, as some people call it, or the eye of Ra, the eye of Horus, Eye of Horus and Eye of Ra go in different directions, okay? That's how you dis differentiate the two. I think that's the Eye of Ra, I want to say. Sun God. Horus, right? I get them so muddled up. I should, I should know this. I'm trying to learn all this stuff. Anyway, the point being is that, like, I'm, this is what I'm saying. This is, I'm, and I'm sticking to my work. I'm sticking to my guns on this, like, type thing. Is that I'm, I'm sensing this now is that we feel that there's so much truth in this stability, and I'm saying there's not. It was a stack of lies. So much of what is built up in society that we hold dear, all the Roman architecture, lies built on murder and mayhem. Yeah. Nearly all of it. Everything. Everything that you see is at some level a. a, a has been birthed from bloodshed, war, famine, everything that covers basically this age of religion, this age of Pisces, which is what we're in. This whole age of religion and lie. No, look, I'm not saying like the look, the age of Pisces is not. I'm not saying it's built and stacked up on lies. Okay, that's not fair, and I'm not 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 saying that to like you know because anyone who's a Pisces that, that 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 they might start feeling that I'm like singling out Pisces as a really negative star sign. It's not. What I'm saying is it is an age of, it's 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 an age I think that's built on foundations of lies and mistruths. And like for me, when the age of Pisces moves into the age of Aquarius, which is a water bringing thing, like that could be classed as a delu as a deluge and a great flood. I think at the end of the age of Pisces is a big flood. And it purifies and allows for rebirth. I've been really thinking about that a lot. And I think when we look at the, the, the Zodiac and you look at the various different versions of the Zodiac and where the houses are placed and stuff, like I'm not convinced that things are in the right place. Okay. Like I'm looking at my chart that's in front of me and I've got, I've got Isis as the Egyptian goddess in, in, in the, in the, in the 12th house of Pisces, the 12th house being the final one, okay? And then we're, we're expected to believe that Aquarius is in the 11th house, okay? And that we go count downwards, okay? When we've, and in the 11th house is the Egyptian goddess, Egyptian god, sorry, Shu, S-H-U, who was the birth of air that they say came after the great breaking of water, <laughs> from almost like a heavenly vagina. Sorry, this sounds nuts, but I'm just going to I'm just keeping it real. I'm just I'm just telling you what it what I what I what I've read and what I understand. This birth, this 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 rebirth. This duality, this not duality, but this yeah. Shu Shu was the was the god of 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 air that came after water that then brought calmness, okay? That's what's coming. Let's get a couple more cards, and then I, I and then I'm done with this because, like this this stuff is just so intense on my brain at the moment. 
let's get a couple more. Can we get a few more cards, please? What do what, what do we need to know? What like like I know I know it's calm coming after the storm, right? I know that. I know we're in the midst of a storm right now. The whole of humanity is. People are just out there breaking down, man. People are losing their damn minds. You're gonna see all manners of carnage, okay? And my next reading, I'm gonna talk about that. There we go. We got some cards out there. What we got? Okay, we got six of pentacles. Uh, the Six of Pentacles is very much like an offering, okay? I'm going to come back to this properly in a second. I read something about the Six of Pentacles earlier. It was really interesting. Yeah, okay. Let's let's finish these up. These cards, I'm taking all these ones. Um, so the Six of Pentacles, it's about offering up, okay? I'm ju I, just want to, I just want to grab some specifics on this particular card. I've got the wrong book here. Um, wrong book. Uh, this one. Because I just want to remind myself so I don't miss this. The Six of Pentacles. Yeah. It's rewards. Presenting rewards. Gratification, attention, caring and prosperity. Um, this really is about, is about everything being offered up now. Okay. And the, that offering needs to, for me, needs to be offering up truth. Offering up the truth of reality. Yeah, that's what's going to stabilize this. Okay, the, this foundation of lies is not going to be is not going to is not going to hold up on the, on the lies. It's crumbling. It's falling. Society is crumbling and falling. It's all stacked up on fucking lies. Sorry for swearing. I didn't want to swear. The Ace of Cups, Scarab Beetle. The Scarab Beetle, was such a significant. I've talked about this in the past. I think it's such a significant amulet the Egyptians because it really represented the 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 journey of life and death but mirrored with with the sun so the scarab beetle would roll put their eggs in the dung ball and then roll it across the sands to its resting place where the eggs would hatch but what the Egyptians knew noticed and why they found this creature so beautiful and amazing and it is it's such a beautiful fascinating creature is because it would roll the ball from east to west I would like someone to confirm that for me. Does the scarab beetle roll from east to west or west to east? I really think that's a significant thing there. I don't know why, but I just think that's very significant. I'm doing a piece of artwork on a scarab beetle at the moment, and the colours, like, it, this, this doesn't do it justice, this, this card here, but... Um, this is, this is a, like, this, for me, the scarab beetle represents life in an in a in a in an unusual way a re like no one buries their eggs in their in feces and then has rebirth right it sounds absolutely appalling and weird and whatever but the point being is it's trying to tell us that like up is down and left is right like like what we think is real and what we think is truth is probably a lie and what we think is not real magic doesn't exist you know fairies aren't real all this kind of stuff is probably true not probably. I know you don't have to believe me, but I know exactly. I know. I know. I know them. I know the. I know them. I know the high priestess. I know the hermit. I know all these char arcane characters are real. They're not. They're not made up. Magic is real. It's not going to go without a battle. Okay, there is going to be some severe severe psychic attacks there's going to be some severe illusions placed on society we're in this is a spiritual war this is a war of magic okay spirit spirituality and magic go hand in hand they're the same thing right the high priestess the hierophant one dealing with magic one dealing with religion like for me the the magician does both the, the true magician understands religion and magic yeah possibly doesn't mean the magician's more powerful i haven't figured that out yet i haven't figured out who's the more powerful character i think they will have their very different levels and things to play um but yeah we'll see possibly the magician i'm feeling the magician but anyway seven of swords and horus always showing up the falcon I'm just got, I just want to get something out of out of here quickly because I just want to check something. Seven of Swords. And then we're wrapping it up.
Design, attempt, desire, hope, faith. Small talk fantasy is a plan which might fail. Bore. Um, this this one is outside of my, my, my 12, okay? Yeah? And if we imagine this is the zodiac wheel, okay? This is the journey, okay? That then ultimately after the magical battle will reset back to the beginning, okay? This is the journey. This is the journey of the reading. This is each one of these could represent the 12, the 12 zodiacs, the 12, whatever you want. But what I'm saying is that like the battle is won outside of the physical because this card is outside of the zodiac. That's really significant. The battle will be won outside of the zodiac. Which means it's a spiritual battle. Which means that if there is, and again, it goes beautifully bookended to the beginning. There's no, if you you will keep repeating this cycle if you try fighting, physic in the physical world. Don't fight. Don't hurt anyone. Don't hit anyone. Don't shoot anyone. Don't kill anyone physical. Kill them in the spirit. Yeah. Go and look up. Like I, I might share some links, but if you want, you, if you link to my to my art stuff and that, and you go and see what's on my website, and my manifestation of what I've written and what I'm doing in the spiritual, seems seems nuts. No one believe me. Kill them in the spiritual. The back of this book, and I, and I'm, I don't for one minute like anyone messing with this book. I seriously, you 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 need to stay far away from this. Here's a name, here are the names of the 72 spirits. I'm checking them off. I've checked off number one. And I've checked off number 69 for a joke. There's a very logical reason for that. Every single one of these is going to be checked off. And basically what's going to be happening is every single one of those 72 demon spirits is going to be executed in the spirit realm. Which means there's no physical, no one is doing any, I'm, I will not be doing anything in the physical realm. I'm doing it in the spiritual realm. It's a spiritual war. And my belief is, and this is just my crazy ass belief and this is all part of the entertainment and the fun of this and we mustn't take life too seriously <laughs> don't take it too seriously is that those deaths in the spiritual world if you kill a demon in the spirit realm you kill a demon in hell yeah you get you 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 just you you dissolve that that demon soul that will have as above so below as below as above that will have a karmic reaction on those people connected to that demon spirit are going to tower and probably it could manifest real death for evil people. Let's see. Let's see what. Let's see if this is right. I'm closing this now. It's crazy reading. 